<laughs> Yay. You see, you're gonna, you're gonna get two rounds of applause. Okay, so next up is, uh, is Richard, and Richard is gonna talk about uh, his project uh, called VPS Admin OS. Uh, and it's a lightweight hypervisor for Linux systems based on uh, NixOS, and I'm looking forward to hearing about it. So, uh, another round of applause for Richard. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to my talk. So, my name is Richard. Uh, I'm going to use another keyboard. So, so, a few words about me. I'm open source software and hardware hacker. Uh, you can find me on GitHub, or some of you might know me as SRK on IRC. <coughs> so this talk <coughs> is related to our nonprofit <coughs> organization called DPS Free. Uh, so we are based in Czech Republic. We offer virtual private servers for our members. Uh, <coughs> we started with OpenVZ in 2009. <coughs> and you can find the site of the organization on vpsfree.org. So currently, we have 1,300 members. We are running nearly 1,900 containers. Uh, typically, these are eight cores, uh, four gigs of memory, and 120 <coughs> gigs of disk space. Uh, you, can, you can work with that if you, if you need more. Uh, basically, this is hosted on uh, much larger machines with uh, like almost half the of RAM currently. And we host these, all these containers only on 22 servers, plus plus two storage nodes. <coughs> So what's the deal about OpenVZ? OpenVZ is <coughs> problematic for us. Uh, we are running OpenVZ 6, which is going to be abandoned very so soon. Uh, VZ CTL is already abandoned, which is a tool to basically configure uh, containers from user space. Uh, also, kernel is going to reach L quite soon. Uh, the kernel is 2.6 point something, very, very, very old. And the uh, OpenVC7 is also problematic for us because there is no process transparency. It's not uh, like OpenVC6 anymore, like not the community. Yeah, there are no sources. It's ba based on, on top of RHEL7, and we don't want it. So uh, another issues we're starting hitting with this old uh, kernel <coughs> is that, for example, some distributions uh, started to be problematic to upgrade because of some system dehardening, for example. Uh, we had to remove, for example, system core filter or memory then write execute <coughs> from, from some memory services, so the distributions can, still can boot and work again. Uh, also, Nixos on our production <coughs> nodes is also stuck on 17.09. Uh, uh, that's also because of systemd and I think UDEV as well. A uh, cool thing, well, while we were debugging this, I realized that with Nixos you can actually git bisect a live running container, a live running system, which is like, wow, crazy. <laughs> and I actually managed to, to find the commit. Uh, sometimes you hit the commits that are not buildable, but which is quite rare. And I didn't do that automatically, but you can like mark the revision manually, and you arrive at the commit which actually breaks everything. So we started searching for replacements. Uh, our requirements are full VM look and feel. Like uh, our containers are not uh, like containers with only one process, but we are running a full uh, system in it. <coughs> so, for example, uh, it boots as a PIT1, it boots full system and all the services inside. So we also need a reliable iso isolation uh, due to security, so other people don't see other people's stuff. They don't should, shouldn't see. Also, they shouldn't be able to do anything to hosts. Uh, we also need a resource isolation to, to apply some limits, for example, CPU or networking limits if you are overdoing something. <coughs> also, we need powerful storage. We are a ZFS house. We are very happy, happy with that. <coughs> and an easy administration. So, uh, for mainline Linux, user namespace is a must for us. Uh, what it does is basically it maps your PID1 in a container to some other PID, which is not PID1 on a host system. And we also apply some additional protection layers. 
Uh, there you can choose bit with LXC, I'll get to that. You can choose between AppArmor and SL Linux. SL Linux is quite problematic because you need the policies for that. And there is only few reference policies. I think that's RHEL and Fedora. And I think Gen2 has some policy. Uh, with AppArmor, that uh, situation, is, situation is quite easier. So we chose that. And we also run second uh, on with LXC as well to limit some calls. <coughs> So we use LXC. LXC is quite bare bones. It knows how to start the container, but you need to configure all the stuff manually. Basically, you need to uh, set user mappings. You need to manage networking. You need to manage uh, C groups. Uh, it's quite hard to manage by hand. So uh, also powerful storage, as I said, we are ZFS, <coughs> Zol house, and uh, we use it because uh, it's like most IOPS reducing solution. Uh, we don't like to lose data. We we have backups, but you know, with ZFS, it's much situation is much better. Also, with new ZFS, there's support for native encryption, and we use send and receive for backups heavily. <coughs> so, easy administration. Uh, currently, our systems like are managed with salt. There are these, uh, that's basically CentOS 6 nodes running OpenVZ. Uh, <coughs> we decided that we want to go some more pure uh, way. Uh, I think, I don't remember the right word, it's like the congruent configuration management uh, where <coughs> we basically don't have a local state on the machines. We build the live images. We don't have any surprises. We don't and on what's running is basically what's written in the uh, Git repository. So we were uh, looking for some solid foundation to build up on. And <laughs> you probably know where this is heading. So VPS admin OS means Nix OS. Uh, sorry for the colors of the logo. I will skip that. <laughs> I made this. Uh, we can build our own software. We don't need large companies to do that for us. <laughs> Thanks to Nix and Nixos and all, all of you. So, uh, we also not quite based the system on Nixos. Well, it's also based on Nixos and also based on NotOS. Uh, thanks to Clever, I uh, didn't have the chance to meet you already. <laughs> so, thank you very much for your support, for, for examples of, of uh, like how to like make your own OS on top of Nix, pa Nix packages. So, we basically use, uh, when people ask about relations to Nixos, the NotOS, and VPS admin OS, I tell them that the Nix packages is basically one huge repository of packages, and a small part of that is uh, actual Nixos and operating system. So NotOS, NotOS actually uses that as well. <coughs> uh, as I said, it's made by was made by Clever. Uh, apart from the small a run it based system that uh, compiles down to 50 megabytes squash for some image. It also uh, supports net booting from IPXC, uh, actually signed IPXC, which is quite nice. And Clever has some examples which you can actually use to deploy your own <coughs> net boot server with all the images. So, EPS admins is quite similar to NotOS. We also use run it. Uh, we use mainline Linux. Uh, we use LXC, LXCFS, and Zol, also a part more. Uh, critical thing for us was that we, uh, we need to be able to alter any component easily, uh, quickly patch some stuff. We already uh, have some patches on top of uh, kernel, on top of LXCFS, and also on top of ZFS. Uh, <coughs> currently, uh, each node has basically uh, image built from a single uh, NixOps repository. Uh, this is deployed to run uh, netboot server, which hosts all the images uh, for like for every node. We also support uh, ISO images, so you can also boot from any of the other media if you don't want to run the full-fledged like deployment. Yeah, and we use NixOps, <laughs> assuming full control. Uh, we had some issues. I'm actually quite a heavy user of NixOps now. We have some patches. Uh, there are mostly collected community patches. Uh, for example, there's a patch that we can 
uh, mix two versions of Nixbug because we can basically deploy machines. We can deploy Nixos machines and we can also deploy uh, VPS admin OS machines from one repository. <coughs> and let's go. Uh, and uh, the most important part is the uh, management utility written by our colleague Iter, uh, which is very powerful. It manages all the stuff we actually you actually need for running containers, uh, mainly user namespace support, control group management, <laughs> content management itself. You can manage devices, for example, you can add uh, KVM or uh, tab devices, or I don't know what else. Also, we added recently we added upper more profile generation and management, so we can have different upper more profiles depending on what you run inside your container. Uh, this is uh, quite important for, for example, yeah, I missed that. Uh, some people were asking about Docker, or for example, Docker is quite hard to run on this old kernel on OpenVZ6. So people uh, were running it on in. KVM basically, so you have a container, you start a QM or KVM in inside, and there you can do whatever you want because if you need new kernel, there's like no other option. So, uh, also can do network management. We have two types of net network configurations, simple bridge networking and routing networking. It also handles migrations, so f if you have uh, older configuration, of your, of your containers, it can, uh, during update, it can update and migrate these configurations uh, because we need to be able to run the machines, for example, for like half a year before the reboot. <coughs> we also provide uh, template repositories and some, I will show this in demo. Okay. So kickstart, for example, uh, when you boot the OS, uh, the very quick way to actually get the container is to run these few commands. I will probably leave this as an exercise for reader. <laughs> the first command basically in its initializes your ZFS pool. Then you need to create a user. Uh, this mapping uh, means <coughs> that the uh, user and group ID uh, is mapped to ID 5,000. No, no, no. I think I'm confusing that. Uh, that's No, the actual user, I think that uh, his IDs are 5,000, and they are actually offsetted by the 666,000 uh, offset, uh, which means that the, uh, if you look at the container or from the host side, you will see that its pits start at 666,000, but from the inside, you have a pit one, you still have pit one. So, and when you have your user, you can start the container, for example, unstable Nixos, and what's missing is you want probably configure a networking. Uh, the simplest way is to use the provided bridge uh, with tab uh, alexcbr0 uh, by default. Uh, this runs DHCP, so by running us this simple ctnet if new bridge command, uh, I missed one important thing. Uh, you don't have to repeat the OS CTL over and over again, uh, you can like skip it and call subcommands without that over and over again. I recently added, I recently added uh, tab completion, so this is also quite pleasant to use. <coughs> and also, there's a way to <coughs> configure routed networking, which we actually used in production uh, to be able to assign uh, like public addresses, uh, public IPv4s to to containers. So. Uh, what's cool as well is that we can do nesting with LXC, so we can run containers in containers in containers. Or, for example, we can run uh, KVM, even full libvirt inside containers. <coughs> so there's basically endless possibilities of what, what can you do. <coughs> and there's also an example how to basically pass a device to, to a container. In this example, you just pass the KVM, and after that, you can run either libvirt or QM with KVM support. So, in the OS, like some few batteries included, I call them. Uh, 
for example, RC's log and TCP forwarding use gray lock to collect these logs. This is quite nice because after the machine boot, you have the full lock <coughs> of the boot as well on this one central side. Uh, we also use node exporter and Prometheus in Grafana. BERT for routing, NFS for uh, to be able to mount uh, network attached storage and also restore backups. Chronity for time and also, <laughs> of course, Nix and Nix daemon. Uh, that's also quite useful because when you have like a node and uh, you need to log into that and you find that some piece of software is missing, you can just enter Nix shell and after you quit the shell, you can just collect, call, collect garbage and the system is like before. <laughs> and there's no craft left over. So, uh, this is all nice, uh, but we, want, we would like to migrate the whole cluster and we need some nodes that will actually have some persistence because we can rely, like chicken egg problem, we can netboot when we don't have a netboot. So our storage nodes uh, will actually be installed. Uh, <coughs> we actually recycled quite quite large parts of Nixos generate config and Nixos install. It's like a bit generic, it's actually quite interesting that you can take these things and they just work with really small uh, small changes. So you can now optionally install this to disk. And also, as I said, we need to be able to uh, update the machines, not only reboot them because the people, if there are like 100 containers running on them and you have like 15 minutes of downtime, it's not what you want to do. So we Im implemented our own uh, switch to configuration, not sure which one, it's, 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 if it's activation script or switch to configuration, but uh, this thing also handles run it, restarting run it services, or reloading run it services, and uh, important, most importantly, it reloads LXCFS, which can be like reloaded with some signal and will load its new library without actually uh, destroying all your LXCFS mounted prots file systems. Yep. Uh, also, if you have the uh, machine installed, you can manage it just like Nixos, and the generic tool <laughs> is always rebuilt, which is, is quite similar to Nixos rebuild. Also, we have our own version of declarative containers. These are different to uh, Nixos declarative containers that they are imported by uh, the OSCTL uh, daemon on boot. Uh, actually, uh, syntax is quite like similar. You can actually define a user as well, which the container is running under. And uh, how it works, the, it actually the images are part of the image that the machine boots, and on boot they are actually uh, imp uh, <laughs> copied to ZFS pools <coughs> and started with configure that as well. It's, well, I want to say that it's different to uh, NSpawn, basically, to Nixos declarative containers that it's not shared with the host, but there's also a way to update all the containers uh, with Nix machinery and <coughs> so if you boot a new version and you want to update your containers, you can do that, but they are persisted on ZFS pools, so you can have backups of these. Uh, I actually wanted this feature mainly for testing, so I don't have to like uh, start the containers over and over again um, manually while I'm testing stuff. So this is quite handy. I just have few containers defined, and when I run the uh, the VPS and MinOS, they are always there. So you can try it quite easily. Uh, I'll make QM is just a wrapper for Nix build. I will show you just uh, in, a, in a moment. We actually have uh, our own fork of Nix packages, but that currently contains one cosmetic patch which adds uh, Ruby man pages, basically. Uh, there were like five patches on top of Nix package, so most of them that are upstream now. Uh, I wish we get rid of this last patch so we can build with upstream Nix packages as well. <coughs> so, and some links. Uh, there's very nice documentation on vps.minos.org. You can find all these little things 
how to set up your machine, how to install, how to manage containers. Uh, you can check out our repository. Actual, actual OS is uh, under the O slash OS, so show that as well. And you can talk to us on Nixos channels or VPS admin OS channels. And also, recently I've also added uh, ISO images to, these are also built with the netboot images for nodes. So basically there's one repository that builds a uh, public facing website and all the required node images for, for a cluster. So to sum, sum it up, in production currently we have CentOS 6 <laughs> with this old kernel and the environment we, call, can, we currently call staging is VPS admin OS with Linux 4, 18, 12. We call it staging but we currently treat it like production and I think that the next year we'll start migrating quite heavily. <coughs> uh, actually the missing feature is that uh, we actually don't manage, we don't use OSCTL uh, to create containers. You have a full-fledged uh, admin panel for that. And that's a kind of future work, basically, uh, to be able to deploy that as well. So uh, it basically talks to a daemon, and when user creates, uses a web interface, you can create this new container, define all the properties, networking, like you are used to with other cloud providers. <coughs> and a uh, missing feature is actually the cloning between the old environments to the new one, which is going to be probably troublesome. <coughs> but since these are only root FS images, it should be quite doable. So, also, I mentioned this, this already. Our old cluster was managed by salt. Uh, salt, I don't know. I feel like it's like unsible with templating. <laughs> I, I think I to no no comment. <laughs> I actually we actually use Nixops and Node Exporter and Prometheus. There's one missing thing I don't like about uh, this metrics-based monitoring system is that they scrape the machine periodically, but there is no way to get actual live metrics to your laptop and to be able to see the cluster state in, in an instant. <coughs> little demo. interesting. It's a presentation on two workspaces simultaneously. <laughs> ah, never mind. So I won't show you how to actually uh, start. No, no, I will show it. When I yeah, yeah I, I try because I, I have to use like external keyboard and also this thing is all impress is trolling me now quite heavily. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Okay, so this is the repository. Uh, it actually is like kind of monorepo. It contains all the utilities. Uh, in OS subfolder, there's actually OS. Yeah. And also OSCTL, which is a command line tooling f uh, to which talks to OSCTLD. These things are written in Ruby. We are heavy users of Bandix as well. There are some tooling. Basically, our make file only wraps Nix or Bandix <coughs> no, this is not quite. Yeah, and so we also have a SVCTL tool, which was added recently for managing uh, run it run levels. And let's go to the OS subfolder. It's quite similar to not OS. We've added a bunch of modules. We reused a bunch of modules from uh, Nixos. For example, we need get these. We need uh, PAM, for example, and all these batteries included stuff I mentioned. 
<coughs> so let's just run it. You can just use make QM, which is another Nix build wrapper. Yeah, you can see it quite well. And after it resolves all the stuff. You'll boot in a moment. <laughs> yeah, so you can see it boot now. It will auto, auto login you. So we made it, we tried to make it easy for people to actually just run, make QMU and get the uh, uh, running system to be able to hack on it. Right. <coughs> so I will SSH into it uh, because of. The QM terminal is quite bad. Huh. If I know, <laughs> maybe I didn't see the password. Never mind. <laughs> Stuff's trolling me today. Never mind, I will use this. So uh, I have two declarative containers uh, that, uh, that were uh, defined in a configuration. I'll show you how that actually looks. We have some impurity called uh, config uh, local nix, which you can just load it uh, with your custom configuration. As you can see, it imports few containers, which one is, one is sim called simple and one is called web server. So I don't have to create create any. There's actually uh, inst this instruction I was showing you is part of MOTD, <coughs> so you can just copy paste this. But yeah, you can s see that we have a running web server and some simple container, both these are Nixos 1809. Uh, yeah, I'll switch to some more, so to our dev node, which there are some more stuff running. You can see that we can run basically any distribution uh, we try to support these most popular distribution and especially Nixos. That's, that's my job. <laughs> and what I want to show you is like, for example, you can uh, enter the container. Let's see, Nixos. Yeah. Yeah, this one is not running. Let's find someone some running. I see to all two. What's this actually? I didn't notice. That's Alpine actually. Yeah. So yeah, well, uh, what I wanted to to show you, I uh, actually use Hydra as well to, to build this. But the <coughs> thing is that we cannot easily test it with uh, Nixus infrastructure because it's heavily dependent on, for example, wait for uh, some system the unit tooling. And uh, one interesting thing is that I've actually developed this for a few months without any hardware. We've just used QMU. And the QMU is just too good for some reason. <laughs> and when you actually test stuff on real hardware, stuff breaks. And there are some race collisions, there are some corner cases. So what I'm trying to, to do is, is like to create some like a virtual laboratory where you have machines. I actually have this dev, dev node uh, is uh, connected via US, uh, USB to serial, uh, to UART, <laughs> to another machine, uh, which runs like some, uh, I won't go into details, uh, TCP to, s to serial bridge. So I can l just uh, use this comport remotely. And that's not all. I can run an <coughs> automation tooling for that. This is a prototype, quite heavy prototype, which will actually deploy use NixOps to deploy our like, uh, development configuration. And then it will actually cycle the node. It will write the reboot to the console. And then it will do the X expect on the wall, wall boot, basically. I think I could demo this as well. We have like one minute. I'm not sure if that's with question or not. <laughs> yeah, I will just run this. I hope it's not going to build squash FS images again. But yeah, and uh, one last thing. Yeah, this now now it's running uh, NixOps. After it's done, it will switch to uh, to another, to the second part, which is actual interaction with the machine. 
Yeah, it will take some time, but I will show you another thing. Meanwhile, yeah, no mind, don't mind the name. Uh, naming problem is quite hard, but the point is that this is able to scrape the, the metrics from from Prometheus. It's another proof of concept. I want to get the feed of these metrics like uh, live, and I want to script the the monitoring, not mm, rely on some pre-made tools, basically. So this is live. This is uh, actually over HTTP currently, but I want to use another backend for that, which I've developed. It's called ZRE. Some of you might know it. Know it. <coughs> uh, yeah. So that's pretty much it. I will leave this running so you can see how it works and how it reboots. Yeah, so uh, ZRE allows me basically uh, to deploy software on various nodes, and they will. Yeah, I think it's finished actually. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yes, and thank you uh, indeed. And who has got questions? Nope. Yes. Huh. Hi, very interesting stuff. Uh, so you told uh, that you were generating IPixy image and uh, booting the servers essentially just over the net in an immutable mode. Yep. But after that, you told us about uh, partitioning the disk and installing the OS on servers anyway. Yep. So w what is the advantage of installing when you told about that the real advantage is about not installing? I mean, uh, it's to solve the, this chicken egg problem because if you have a cluster, like you need some machine which actually hosts the netboot server, you know. But you, you can use live images. You can actually uh, plug on some USB stick to, to do that for you, and that's, that's quite hel uh, that that's why we like want to have like installation, so we can install the OS on uh, two storage nodes, for example, and that will host uh, the uh, netboot images for the rest of the cluster. Any further questions? Do we have questions from the internet? I love saying that. <laughs> no? Okay. So uh, thank you, Richard, very much for an interesting talk. Thank you, too.